we have two of the top budget friendly and extremely capable tractors out there. This is a lot like the Kubota setup. There is kind of some conflicting information out there about the loader capacity. It kind of deflected when you, when you grabbed it. You do not know if you're gonna get a 4030C or a 4030. Yeah. So handy. That's something that you do not get to determine at the point of contract signing or purchase. It's what the dealership gets sent. Well more protected. They do, do it on the rears, wonder why they wouldn't do it on the fronts. There it comes. I'm so glad it's got that 4030C on there. And here's your remote. This is the blue one on okay. this side. Okay. It will not stay in. Okay. This one stays in. Okay. But you want to push it back this way to run the back over. Okay. If you push it this way, it, don't, it won't run it. Before you get on it, check your oil. Welcome to the Okie Woodsman channel. Today, we have two of the top budget-friendly and extremely capable tractors out there with the Coyote CK2620 and the TYM 2515H. One of them is gonna stay here and one of them's leaving. Will I regret my decision? Stay tuned. We've got a 25 horse Coyote machine with loader and backhoe. It has remote options and third function options. We're gonna kind of compare this to the TYM machine. If you've been looking at this one, it's very possible that you've been looking at the TYM. This is the competitor from TYM, the 2515H. If you're not familiar with this tractor, this is actually a Branson tractor. When TYM purchased Branson, they decided to keep the excellent design that Branson had and they've rebadged it, and this is a phenomenal tractor. The loader capacities are second to none. It has the best loader capacity for a machine this frame size. This one's also configured with the backhoe, so we really have two comparable machines. They're similarly priced. Depending upon the promotions, one may be cheaper than the other in your local area. A few years back, I was convinced I was gonna buy a tractor and I had my mind made up on Coyote until I went to the Branson dealership. The Branson dealership told me all about the simplicity of the Branson design, the weight of the machine, and the super robust Kukja engine. I believe that's a Cummins design from years ago. We're gonna go ahead and do a walk around both of these machines today, talk about some of the similarities, talk about some of the differences, and I'm gonna invite my friend here today that knows far more than I do. Let's get started. If you're not familiar with Mike, he has the channel, The Rusty Garage and Homestead. He's become a great friend of mine through YouTube. And when I found out I was taking delivery of my tractor today, we had already had some plans about getting some work done on my property. He's offered to bring his machine over and it just worked out perfectly that both machines are here at the same time. Mike knows far more about equipment and machinery than I do, so I'm really curious to see what he thinks after he watched me go through the walkthrough with the dealership. The dealership came and delivered the Coyote to me today and did their walk around, talking to me about features, operation, service points, and all that. Let's see what we think. Am I gonna regret my purchase? Because Honestly, it was agonizing for me whether or not I should buy this TYM machine or this Coyote. I was actually at the TYM dealership when I decided that this was the tractor for me. And, and the funny part is I was bound and determined that the Coyote was gonna be the machine I purchased and I ended up with the 
the, the Branson, essentially, the two I am. So <laughs> the question I have, and I'm, and I'm going to be agonized with this forever, is, is there a right decision? You know, when you're spending this kind of money on a piece of equipment, you want to make the right decision. So we both now own each of them. And uh, it'll be kind of interesting to see what our experience is in the long run. And how long have you had your machine for? Three months, four months, somewhere in there, I think. So far overall, are you happy you have it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, I never thought that I would use or have a want or need of a compact tractor as much as I do. Because I've got larger ag tractors, but this thing is so tiny and nimble, and the capacities or capabilities are, to me, through the roof. Mm-hmm. It's become a almost a daily use type of machine for me. Awesome. And for myself, this is the only machine I have besides a pickup truck and manpower. And so a compact tractor for me is going to be a game changer around my property. You, you're going to love it. You, you are going <laughs> to love it. Uh, all right here. There's a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of differences in yeah. both machines. And, and that's, that's cool. And that's something that I wouldn't have known unless you were here listening to john talk about that one thing i want to go ahead and address this is really strange but when it comes down to loader capacities we all want the most we can get right the coyote is very unique because there's actually two capacities and this is something that i was not aware of until you actually mentioned it when i was thinking about purchasing this machine he actually googled something and at that moment I realized that there is kind of some conflicting information out there about the loader capacity. Yep. This machine is configured with the Coyote KL4030, all right? When they order these tractors, you do not know if you're gonna get a 4030C or a 4030. My understanding is that the C is a Canadian produced loader and it has more lift capacity. It's close to 2000. It's around 1980. If you get the non C, what happens is you're closer to 1800. And again, that's something that you do not get to determine at the point of contract signing or purchase. It's what the dealership gets sent. I want to be able to pick up logs. I want to be able to pick up material. And another big thing is, is eventually I'm going to get a pair of forks for this. When you start thinking about capacity in terms of bags of concrete, when you're at, let's say I bought a Kubota machine and had a 12 to 1300 pound load, that's very few bags of concrete. And we've hauled numerous bags of concrete around my property by hand. And I want to be able to carry as much as I possibly can. Mike has some great videos on his channel about the capabilities of this tractor. It's insane. And when I watch those videos, I question, did I make the right decision? So one of the big differences besides capacity for the Coyote 4030C loader and the BL150 on the TYM is the Coyote has a console control back here, which is, is honestly something I would prefer. The Branson TYM has it on the loader frame itself. I get why they do this. It's simpler, it's less moving parts, it's cheaper. That's probably the main reason it's like this. It does make it a little more of a pain if you're wanting to get on the right side of the machine versus having your loader controls back here on the console style. But that's something that you just get used to. I always get on and off the left side because I'm big enough, I'm gonna hit the controls anytime I try to get on and off from the right side. So the loader capacity on the BL150 is 2200 pounds at the pins. I have put that to the test recently with some wheat barrels with the pallet, the forks, and the weight of the wheat. I exceeded the 2200 pound lift capacity of this machine and it still did it. But I would say to anyone out there that is using their loaders in a, a capacity where they are pushing the limits to exceedance or beyond exceedance, just use extreme caution because it can be very dangerous and it can be costly because you can tear a lot of stuff up if you're not careful. So as far as backhoes go, there's a few things that I've noticed quite a bit different. On the Coyote, I like the swing lock pin. They give you a long handle extension where you can remove it and install it from the operator seat. Mine, you have to be off of it. Same with the boom lock that's got a pin down here. The Coyote has a spring-loaded latch 
that pops up out of the way. That's a, a whole lot more handier from an operator standpoint. Yeah, so handy. Yeah, to be up on the seat. Yeah, so a lot of times on mine, I do forget. I'll get up in the seat, go to move it, and instantly remember that it's locked. So I have to get off the machine, onto the ground, to remove the pins. Whereas here, you can run everything, or remove the pins, essentially, or, or the, the latches from the operator station, which makes things extremely handy. So, so I can already tell a lot more room. I'm a bigger guy anyways, but this is a lot more comfortable than, than mine. We'll, we'll show you here in a second how it is on mine. The controls are a lot lower and I'm closer to them. I did move my seat back as far as I could. I had to do some modifications, uh, but from the factory, the seat was about an inch away from this console. So you were right up here on it. These controls are up in a comfortable ergonomic place. Everything seems heavy duty, uh, plenty of leg room. This is set up for operator ergonomics a lot better than the BH-150 on the TYM. And that's something I didn't actually know because when I made the deal on this machine, there wasn't a machine on site with the backhoe. So I didn't know honestly what I was gonna get. And so I'm pleasantly surprised at the way this is set up. One more thing that's unique about this backhoe versus the TYM setup is the three point can stay on the machine when the backhoe is mounted on there. We'll also show one more difference in mounting the backhoe on this machine versus the TYM when we go back to that machine. So from what I can tell, the machine is set up to be very comfortable. Time will tell how it is on power, on, on digging things. Joe's got a lot of rocks around here. Uh, I think it's gonna do just fine, but, but that's something that as, as we progress and use these machines, we're, we're gonna figure out what kind of capabilities they both have. I opted for the optional posable thumb because I do not have a grapple currently, I'm actually going to be picking up logs with this and rocks, and this is gonna be helpful. Anytime I've not had a thumb, I end up pinching up against the boom, which of course you can do, but you're a little limited. Sometimes you can, uh, kind of can't work it in there and get it to hold where this does have some teeth. It should help bite, and I can move it up one more out of the way. I could remove it all the way, or I can go ahead and get the thumb down in a lower position to be able to grab things. I think the thumb is gonna be extremely handy. Mike's machine is capable of having that as well. It's just something that I configured because this machine is less of a farm tractor for me and more of a digging machine. I bought this as a backhoe and less of a tractor. More than likely, I'm anticipating keeping my backhoe on this unit most of the time. So something else that I really like on the Coyote, how the backhoe set up, it's a lot easier to get on and off this backhoe versus mine. I've got some tiny little steps on the, on the front side, which would be right up here on mine. On Joe's machine, you've got some nice larger steps right here on the back side where you can just progress right to the operator station. Interesting. Yeah, it is open. It does seem, it seems to me like it would be beneficial I don't know, maybe not, but it seems like it'd be beneficial if this plate was a little bit bigger here. Yeah, probably. Um, to be. have more foot space, but maybe not. <clears throat> Let me see. I like that I can put my leg through there. Yeah, I still can't. Even after moving it back, I can't. Wow, that's really cool to be able to do that yeah. from here and not hop off. This is a lot like the Kubota setup, you know. Coyote does some things better, TYM does some things better, but ergonomically, the Coyote's winning. I, I mean, I've, I've ran mine a good little bit. This, this is a nice setup. I want to try to lower my seat if I can, just a hair. I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I'll be able to. Oh yeah, there's a, another set of bolts down. I might be able to actually go down about yep. an inch. Yep, looks like you can go down one more inch on it. Cause, cause right now my feet are kind of um, like, I feel like I'm stretching like, like I'm putting more weight right here and I want to sit more in the seat yeah. of the seat. See, so when you sit on the TYM here in a minute, it's going to feel completely different. Interesting. Yeah, those steps are in a good spot. Yes, so I don't use mine. I step on that loader for, or the uh, sub Yeah, frame. right back there. I'm gonna enter from the same side, so I'm doing the same thing. So this is where I always step. Yeah, that looks like a natural place because this looks kind of weird. Yeah. So from here, they want you to do this 
and man, I could really bust my shin on that. It, like if I didn't have grip on my shoes, seems like you could slide off. So they want you to do this. I like that the deck is deeper here. And yes, you kind of do need to go over. I like how low your seat is. To be honest with you, I feel right in this position right here, I feel like this is more comfortable for me. To me, operating it is comfortable. But getting on and off. But getting on and off is a little bit of a pain. And, and I honestly think they give you more than enough room yeah on the back side of that seat you could go back at least another six inches with that seat if you want to do but you but you have to do the modification for it yourself right yes. so one thing i noticed when you climbed on my machine is that hoop handle right here it's nice it's big yes but it seems very flimsy it, it kind of deflected when you when you grabbed it now of course you're probably just supposed to stabilize yourself on it but to me that might be a little too light in comparison to like these, these are solid on here. Honestly, I, 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 that's one of the first things I noticed. But yeah, I see what you're saying, that pin there. And- uh, Yeah, you gotta get to them from off the machine. Yeah. And the swing lock, most of the time I leave it out. It's not every day that you have the opportunity to look at two competing machines in the same class, both made in South Korea, right next to each other with the backhoe. It's awesome. Yeah, I uh, that that is a little bit tougher, and actually, yeah, it, you're kind of wondering where you should put your. I, I know, and, and getting down most of the time, I do exactly what you just did. I I step down on the ground, and you, yeah, that's what I yeah, it's a, that's what feels natural. Let's talk about how the backhoes mount. They're similar but different. First things is we have a subframe that goes up to the midsection of the tractor. And we have basically a, a notch system that this hooks on back here and then pins up front. Also, the top three point link is also attached to the backhoe. I think personally that that's actually good. I think that having a third mounting point can't hurt anything. The other thing I like about this subframe, this subframe hooks into the loader frame. So it's all- Oh, all really? Oh, Mike was just talking about this. Does it, where's the pins? Oh, they're down here, huh? Yeah, they're, or, the pins are underneath. Okay. Right up in here. Oh, okay, okay. So, yes, the backhoe frame attaches all the way up to the loader subframe. That makes for a very strong unit. I think so. I, th I think Branson did a real good job when they designed this. Yeah, they did. So we've got some hydraulics components over here. We'll go ahead and kind of take a look over on the Coyote now. Well, yours is attached to it as well. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Like I mentioned, Mike's pins on up front and then has a system kind of like this on the rear. Mine's exactly opposite. These get placed into here and then the pins are on the back. And like he said, this does mount all the way up to the loader frame up here as well. Your backhoe can be removed simply with these two pins. You set it down and drive away. So I haven't removed my backhoe yet. Every time I get ready to take it off, I come up with a reason why I need to use the backhoe for something else because the backhoe is extremely handy. I think Joe's gonna get a lot of use out of his. Without a backhoe, I honestly did not want a tractor. In a future video, I'm gonna talk about some other competing machines that I looked at, but that's a whole nother topic for another day. So as you can see, you've got your three point all still in here. Easy access from both sides. I am likely going to be trying to drop this down one, and that's that's gonna go down an inch and a half. I think I'll be in a great yeah. seating position for myself. Um, look at all these mounting holes under here. I believe that this could go back one or forward one. The seat does tilt forward. We were talking about the console mounted loader controls. Here's an example of that. It keeps this side of the tractor much less cluttered. Like Mike was talking about, this is more complex. I believe there's linkages or solenoids and I mean, is that about right? Is yeah. it's linkages? Uh, I'm not exactly sure where the <coughs> control valve is. I'm thinking it's under there, but. I see a, a valve right here actually. Is it, okay. Is that a valve right there? That is a, that does look like a. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of hydraulics. So actually the lines go back to that point. Yeah, yeah, your valve is there. Wonder what's under here then. 
Um, this was for the third function, I think. Okay, does this, does it, do the 2620s not have this little box on there? I do not believe so. I believe this was an addition and this is a protective box okay. around it. Okay, that, that makes more sense then. All Coyote tractors in this series, now the loaders all have the buttons in place, but do not come with the third function already there but you do not have to swap out the knob i did go ahead and pay for that option because i do intend on using a grapple at some point i currently only have a bucket i'm happy that you went with a cutting edge with your rocky soil around here that is going to put a lot of life into your bucket having the replaceable cutting edge on it absolutely this is an absolute must because otherwise you're just ripping up this bucket edge this is going to get thrashed this was an affordable option something i've noticed that i i do like on joe's loader that the tym does not have on the skid steer quick attach levers he's got grease points on it mine does not where are they at there man there. Um, so these down here those grease points are for oh this, oh this right here this okay that's a big deal because these can get problematic yep. with time and dirt yep so what i'll end up doing as, as I use mine, I'll put some sort of like dry graphite lubricant on mine just to help keep it free. But since you've actually got grease points, that, that's a great option too. Gotcha. Do you guys have any recommendation for a grease gun? Should I go electric with my rigid battery kit or should I just get a pump gun because this is the only piece of equipment I need to grease? Let me know your thoughts. I just noticed something else different. Okay, this is, this is more of a knock on Coyote that I think TYM or Branson has done a better job. Okay. On the front tires, do you notice anything different? Your rears, your rears have them, your yes. fronts do not. There is no stud on this. Those those are bolts that bolt into the hub. Oh, nope, that's, that's not what I'm- That's I'm not what a, you're thinking? Nope. Okay. You see my valve stem? It's protected. I have a protection around my valve stem. I just noticed that your rears have it. My, my rears have it. But your fronts are more exposed than your rears are. They are. And that's that's where you're going to turn and yep. run into rocks and stuff. Um, and honestly, I did see a video where a guy bent his wheel pretty oh, really? easy on this machine. Yeah. yeah. That's that's interesting. I just, just sitting here, I, I noticed both of them. What about the studs? I didn't notice that, but yeah, I've got You can studs. hang your wheel on it where this one, I mean, I guess maybe it'll hang on this right here maybe. A yeah. little bit, but that would be a nuisance. It is. As a previous mechanic, I've, I've replaced a lot of wheels on, on very large equipment stuff. Having studs is extremely handy for being able, uh, just, it, it helps with the ease of the install. And yeah. yes, that's well, well more protected. I like that. I, I wonder like why that. they wouldn't, they do, do it that? on the rears, wonder why they wouldn't do it on the fronts. This is a 25 by 8.5, 14. This is a 27 by 8.5 by 15. So a little larger wheel on the Coyote. Okay. I didn't know that either. We don't know the specs as far as ground clearance or anything like that. It's just little interesting things that we're noticing as we have these parked side by side. So Joe touched on the 20 series of Coyotes come standard with the third function buttons already on the loader controls. Mine, I, I've got a third function on this machine as well but it is not pre-wired for it. So I, they had to install a different handle and the buttons are actually here on the inside. I think Joe's being on the console mount and having the two buttons up front is gonna be a whole lot more comfortable when he's using it. Hmm, I didn't notice that. Oh, I see. Now, could you turn this and I, put them I on think, top? I think you could. Uh, but it wouldn't be bad on your thumb though. No, I, I don't think so. And I haven't, when you actually utilize it. When well, I start no, using right? it, it, it may get changed. I think it's okay for right now. Mm -hmm. And that's a WR long third, third function. function, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Something whenever I was looking at the 2620 Coyotes to purchase, uh, I was wanting the, Coyote calls it a link pedal. TYM calls it auto throttle. On the TYM it comes standard, but that was a feature that I wanted. But the thing I like about the Coyotes version is you can turn it on and off. It's got a lever that goes there on the dash where you can shut it off if you don't want it. You can turn it off on here, but it's a little harder. I'll have a future video on that coming out at some point where I'll show you how you can disable the auto throttle. And I did not buy the linked pedal option. It was discussed with me, but 
at that point, I was like, I just want to keep it as simple as possible. I'm used to on a lot of heavy equipment, <laughs> adjusting the throttle myself. I'm not sure how Coyote does the auto throttle. I'm, I'm thinking it's very similar to this, but this is basically a second cable that runs from your foot controls to the injection pump. It's still fairly simple design. Does yours have cruise control? Um, I don't think so. Okay, that was, that was another uh, standard feature that this had that, that I, for me, if I'm going to the back of my property, which Joe's been there, it's fairly deep driving all the way to the back uh, on the Ranger. It's pretty quick, but on something like this, you go a lot slower. So instead of having your foot press on the pedal all the time, you can just click the cruise control on that's helpful. Or if you're tilling a garden, you want to keep a consistent speed while you're rototilling. So cruise control comes in real handy for stuff like that. And that's something I actually was aware of. And then I had to think, okay, what's my intended purpose of this machine? Like Mike was talking about, he's got a lot more land than I do. Mine's gonna be tighter loader work in a more confined area. And I'm generally not gonna be traveling long distances. So when I was offered the option, I decided that that's not something I currently need, but I could definitely see the use if you're driving from the front to the back of your property, like Mike is, it's, it would be very handy for sure. One more thing I wanna to touch on is I like that this mat is standard. I think that that's nitpicky personally. It, it is nitpicky, but on the Coyote, it, it is something you have to pay for. And if you notice, I did not pay for it. I was warned that in the winter time when this has a little bit of ice on it, it is slick. I'll probably add that sometime in the future, but as of right now, I honestly just didn't want to spend any more money. <laughs> so one of my gripes on the TYM is the parking brake. I want Joe to demonstrate on the Cody how simple it is to set the parking brake. And then I'm going to have him get on the TYM and get his thoughts on that one. Okay. That's actually interesting because when I was watching videos on the parking brake, a lot of people actually had complaints about this one. And I'll show you why. So there's your brake. In order to set your brake, you've got to push in, and then you have a secondary little lever here. So you really need two feet. Okay, so to release it, you just simply push on it. And a lot of people don't like that it takes a secondary action. But Mike, after seeing this, Mike thought this was impressive. I still don't know how that one works. So I'm curious to see. One more thing that we're gonna talk about while we're in the cockpit here is this does have a clutch pedal over on the left foot. It's not needed to shift, but it does have a clutch pedal. Share with me in the comment section of why that might be a good thing or a bad thing. Because the loader is here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and carefully get in on this side. It's a lot tighter squeeze than those on the Coyote. It is. So. Slide the seat up where, where you would right be. Here. Yeah. So is your, are your feet comfortable? That's where you'd be operating it from. It's a little person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that probably feels good right there. Okay, now to set the parking brake. Oh, it's right here, huh? Go, go ahead and just press on the brake pedal. That's not a clutch on that side. That is only... This is a brake. That is a brake pedal. That's interesting that the brake is on the left foot. What I like about the Coyote is my wife, she's going to operate this tractor periodically, but she's going to be used to an automobile more where she's looking for the brake with her right foot. Interesting. So you have to push on that and then do what? Pull and then do this. That. So you're pretty much touching the floorboard on this. Setting it is not that bad. Releasing it is a pain. You, you almost need to be a gymnast. I am not very flexible and let me tell you as i'm pushing on this right here i'm feeling it in my hamstrings <laughs> i feel so out of shape oh my gosh and then you can let go yep. so that was one of my big gripes because i i'm not a small person and for me bending over you you pretty much have to bend over and touch the floorboard to set the parking brake that's a little bit of a pain i think tym could do a lot better job designing that <laughs> As I have more of a sedentary lifestyle, my stomach keeps getting a little bit bigger and I get heartburn. <laughs> and I'm telling you what, man, that right there, I'm pinching. I'm pinching my stomach a little yeah, bit. I, your, your face is almost down into the steering it, wheel it when you is. do that. It, 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 it is because, yeah, because all the way down here, my beard is touching the steering wheel. A hundred percent. And my arm is stretched out. My left butt cheek is out of the seat right now. 
That's crazy. It is, it is not in a good location. And so, do you use this parking brake, Mike? Honestly, no. <laughs> if I can keep from it. You don't. There's so. sometimes that I've got the loader in use where I have to set the parking brake if I'm on any sort of a slope because this thing sometimes will want to roll. So occasionally I do have to set the parking brake, but for the most part, I set the loader down enough where it takes uh, pressure off the front tires and that's my parking brake just because it's so much of a pain on this machine to set so i'm going to let you talk about this because i don't know what the heck i'm looking at on your machine but i think you have a push button pto it is a, i do not i don't think there's a lever over there okay on that side 540 se so on this pto push button you have a automatic okay. and off independent so if you wanted the PTO on all the time. Okay, so like is. if you're a brush hogging yep. and you wanted to be able to reverse and, right. okay. And to take it off, hit the button, it springs centers back to the off position. If you want it in auto, same deal, you push over and twist. So why would someone want an automatic PTO? The way the automatic PTO works on this is whenever you raise the three point arms, the PTO will disengage. So if you're tilling in your garden, and you get to the very end, you pick the tiller up, it disengages the PTO because once that, that tiller comes up, you're putting your U-joints on your PTO shaft in a uh, more of an extreme angle that is not good for it. So whenever you pick it up, the PTO automatically shuts off. When you lower them back down, PTO automatically comes back on. That's certainly something I did not know about and that would be something worth knowing if you're gonna be using the tractor for that type of functionality, for sure. So you got high, medium, and low range, right? Yep. You got A, B, C. Is A high range? No, A, A is low. A is low. B is medium, and C is high. It's interesting. There's no neutral between A, or there's there's neutral between C and B, but not between A and B. It's interesting. I think mine is set up a little different. Yeah, I think yours is between the A and. Oh, yep. I need to slide back. the seat back. So, so that's another. Uh, ergonomically, it is comfortable from the operator station. But for myself and just watching Joe just now, uh, whenever I have to get off, I automatically have to slide the seat all the way back, which with the seat all the way back, a tall person could operate this machine because with it all the way back, my toes really don't even reach the pedals. So you, was tilt wheel standard on yours? Yes. Mine was not. Was it? And okay. Nope, and I, I have a, sta I I have a fixed that. in place. Uh, if I went to the SE model, it would have come with it. But I'm the kind of person that when I have an automobile with tilt wheel, I don't really use it either. Yeah. So Once it's set, it's set. I just leave it. You know, I get used to it. Now I could see, honestly, on this one, I probably would bring it down all the way into this low position here because I think it's good. Yeah. But if I don't pay attention to it too much, I won't be dissatisfied with mine. <laughs> How is it on, uh, is the seat all the way back? How is it reaching the... <laughs> the... I don't so... know if I could... There we go. So you could be a tall person. You could be a very tall person. And run this machine. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I like your diesel fill location better than mine. I, I do. Was... So Job just brought up an interesting point on the diesel tanks. His is up high behind the operator station. Mine is down low under the operator platform. And originally, I didn't like the idea of having my fuel tank so low because some of the things I drive over, I could see me popping a hole into the tank at some point. I'm pleasantly surprised with it. I, I'm, I'm preferring it down low now as opposed to being up high. That's nice with a five gallon can of diesel. You're, does, you're, it, does it hold about 10 gallons? It, this one, I wanna say it's seven, but don't hold me to it. I could okay. be. I, so his, his tank holds, I think a little bit less than mine. If that's relevant, I don't know. You're gonna have to decide that for yourself. But I do like that putting diesel fuel out of a five gallon jug when it is a full jug, it is heavy. Yes, it is. And I do see the point, you know, what, what Mike's talking about. It is a little bit less protected down there. We'll go look at mine here in a moment. Mine's back up in here. We're gonna park the tractor side by side as best as possible and kind of take a look at the differences and the dimensions here in a little bit. So something else that I like that the Cody does that I feel most tractor manufacturers should do. The Cody has a hingeable PTO cover. Mine does not. And if you hook up your PTO quite a bit, not having that extra space and being able to really see what you can do, 
makes a huge difference. This machine, it's fixed. Tractors need PTO covers. That's, it, it just makes you safer, makes me safer, makes the equipment safer, people around it. But it's also almost a hazard on installing and removing your PTO shaft when you can't necessarily see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So you, you're reaching up in there blindly and you're filling. There's a few different styles of PTO engagements. Some of them have like a, a spring pull style that you pull back and push at the same time. Some have a button on the side that you push in. It's just a little bit of a pain when you can't really see what you're doing. Oh, it's actually up right now because we were talking about it. He said everything is stiff right now because it's all fresh paint. Let's see if I'm even... There we go. Yeah, so there's your cover and then you can pick up on it and get it out of the way. And it swings up way out of the way. It's got actually little rubber feet here too to keep it from like rattling against here when it's in the down position. Something else I just noticed. What's that? That I'm, I'm not sure. Time will tell, I guess. Mm -hmm. Your remotes look like they're a little bit of a pain to get to. I think, I think that's what I was thinking too. They're deep in there. Yeah, and it's under the fuel tank, so the fuel tank's kind of taking up space. It is. My experience with these types of hydraulic connections is limited to like skid steers, and sometimes they are a bear to get on and off. And I feel like that's a knuckle buster right there reaching down into that hole. That's just my thought. So the thing, the thing I don't like about, I like mine's location, but I don't like that they're clumped together so tightly. Sure. You know, yeah, they're, they're on one block, aren't they? Yes. So do I have the same amount of hydraulic capability as you do back here? I've yes. got a set on that side and a set on that side. Yep. You've got your set here and okay. that's gonna be on your uh, your detent set. Okay. And then the other set's right there. Should I put those caps there. on it? Uh, I would, just to keep all the crud out of it. Yeah, there's no reason to have them open. I'm a big fan. If they've got a cover like that... Put them on. Yep. This is the first time I've ever done this. Yeah, and see, you know what? This is in the way. The three point's in the way here. Is it? Yeah, I feel like I'm going to hit my hit my knuckle if I slip or something, you know? There we go. Yep. A little bit of hydraulic fluid. I've got one dipstick right here. Yours had, I think I saw two things back there, didn't it? Uh, well, the fill port okay. and the dipstick. Are they separate yes. on yours then? Yeah, so the front of the trackers are about even. Let's put the loaders all the way down. So our tires are pretty close to in line. My backhoe does, the frame sticks out a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. All right. See mine? I, I feel like I'm just right here. Like my arms are resting on my legs. Yeah, yeah. Interesting to measure from that pin to the end pin there. Yeah. 
Yeah. Should I go grab, grab a tape real quick? Yeah. I'll just grab a tape and... Good. Uh, I would say 87 and three quarter. 87 and three quarter? That's center of the pen. Okay. 87 and three quarter? Right here, right? What, 92 and a half? 92? So just a little bit more, just a couple of inches. That's five more inches. Yeah. How high can you go with it? Uh, Let's do that. So you can reach up into a tree and push it. Woo. Sun's blinding. About 111. 111 inches. 120, about uh -huh. 10 foot. 120 inches. So about about 10 about 10 more inches or so, 10 11 inches. So it reaches a little. It's, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Now, of course, the the pivot points might make a difference, you know. So that means the digging depth may be a little bit more. It maybe. That one does look like it may be just a few inches higher. Yeah. On that little mound. Yeah. 91 inches. 91. 90. I'd say they're about the same. That's within a margin of error. And because the ground is uneven yeah. and I, there could have been a rock or not, I think they're pretty much similar. Yeah. What's interesting to me though is the the length of your loader is much longer. I mean, you can see we're about 18 inches out. Yeah. Close. It's almost 18 inches. It's almost 18 inches. That's wild. Being able to get the, the forks up further up onto my flatbed. Yeah, it know? does. I, I was able. I didn't have to. Normally, if you have a pallet too far up, you have to kind of yeah get forks in, pick up, and drag it back. I was able to get all the way underneath it on. The yes. Flatbed. But in a tight scenario where you're turning around trees, yep, that could be a hindrance. It's a little bit of a hindrance too. So again, it just depends on what you're needing. Interesting. I just want to say thank you to Mike for coming on over here with his tractor. We didn't know we were going to be doing this video today because we arranged to do some dirt work on my property, digging some stumps with his machine. And then suddenly my dealership calls me up and says that this is arriving. And so it was the perfect opportunity to get both units parked side by side. It was a pleasant surprise. <laughs> it was pretty cool. So we're, we're definitely sweating a lot less than we thought we were going to be. In terms of the question that I asked earlier is, did I make a mistake? I won't know that, but I will tell you this right now. As we looked over these machines, there's areas where there's some advantages on the Coyote and advantages on the TYM. I don't think that there truly is the perfect machine. In reality, actually, as we were kind of discussing some things off camera, I think his machine might be the perfect machine for him based on the way that he uses the machine. We'll see how this does in the long run. Mike has had his TYM for a few more months. And so if you wanna see more about the TYM 2515H, make sure you go visit the Rusty Garage and Homestead. His channel's rapidly growing, lots of good information. He has cattle, he does equipment, he's a welder, and he's developing his homestead. And I look up to him because I get to learn some things from him and he's always willing to help me out when I need help. And so that is truly wonderful. So Mike, thank you so much for coming on over here. I think Joe's Coyote, the 2620, is going to be a huge game changer for him here on his homestead. It sure is. I'm just so excited to be able to, like those rocks over there, to be able to just pick them up and move them. I mean, it's just, it was such a chore. I've, I've used come-alongs mm -hmm. and ropes and chains and trucks and tried to drag stuff. And then when it's, it's off by six inches, it's like, I'm trying to use bars and it just doesn't, it's a pain in the neck. So it's just, it's gonna be awesome. If you wanna see the video where we dig some stumps out on my access road, make sure you also go ahead and visit his channel. Thank you for being here, thank you for watching. And if you wanna see more about my Coyote tractor and see how it develops this property, stay tuned and I'll see you on the next one.